The centuries-old shelves of the Collins family library hold many volumes of history and lore, but one set of tomes lies hidden in a secret compartment behind the library's oldest bookcase. These books must never be opened, must never be read, for the hidden books contain unimaginable evil within their pages. Tonight, young David Collins has stumbled upon the secret compartment and has taken the cursed volumes. Should he read them, he will unwittingly be the cause of a new and unholy terror at Collinwood. Collinwood, tis I, your hostess, Danielle, a.k.a. Penny Dreadful. And oh, am I excited to bring you today's episode. It's going to be a short one. It's going to be a short episode, but it's packed with lots of great information about Hermes Press and their amazing Dark Shadows publications, the reprints of all the classic tales from Gold Key and paperback library, the newspaper strips. We're going to hear all about that from Sabrina Herman very soon. But first, I have some things I want to talk to you about. I want to let you know about a few things. Before anything else, uh, I just saw that Robert Hoffman posted a new transfer a couple months back of his great short film, The Creepy Bopper. And I've seen this before. I saw it years ago, uh, but it had been quite a long time. And uh, he uh, he posted a comment um, after the Jim Beard episode and posted a link to this new transfer of the film. And it's so much fun. And okay, I'm going to just redo the description uh, just to set this up. Poor little day. David, he runs home after school every day to watch Dark Shadows with bad grades, get him grounded from his favorite hobby. Now he has to master all of his resources to defeat his enemy. But who is the enemy? And isn't this description longer than the movie itself? How did that happen? A USC non-dialogue, non-sync sound, super 8mm film in a new 2022 transfer. And I love this. I, I've i completely forgotten about this. This is amazing. The, the Creepy Boppers uh, was an article written by uh, John Colhane for Newsweek on December 14th, 1970. Anyway, the kids who were obsessed with watching Dark Shadows in the 60s and 70s, and the kids who ran home from school to watch it and were just enthralled by it, were dubbed Creepy Boppers by uh, Colhane. And I, Penny Dreadful, call upon the spirits of Mr. Hoffman's film and Mr. Colhane's Newsweek article and I hereby resurrect the appellation Creepy Boppers and henceforth, dear listener, that is what you will be called. Whoa, what just happened? Hi, whoa. All right, Creepy Boppers, let's move on. Thank you, Robert Hoffman, for uh, posting that and bringing that back to my mind. I rewatched it, and uh, the new transfer looks sensational. Uh, so please go watch that right now. The link to the video is in the show notes. I also want to give a thank you to Chris Franklin, who hosts uh, the FW Presents podcast, which is part of the Fire and Water Network, uh, along with his wife, uh, Cindy. He also hosts the JLU cast, which I've mentioned uh, here at Terror at Collinwood before. Uh, Chris uh, said some very kind things uh, about Terror at Collinwood during his interview with Jim Beard, who was uh, on here a couple episodes back. So thank you very much, Chris. I really appreciate that. Uh, folks, if you want to check out some excellent podcasts jump on over to uh, the fire and water network and there are a variety of podcasts on that page a plethora of podcasts in fact and they all look really groovy um i will link to chris's interview uh on the fw presents uh episode where he had jim on and jim of course talked about running home to shadows and also about batman the 66 batman it was a great discussion and i will link to that and uh also to the fire and water podcast network page. So thank you very much, Chris. 
All right. So um, moving on, we have um, another wonderful thing I want to tell you about, and that is my good friend and fellow horror host, Dr. Sarcophagi, John Dimes, who you heard in episode six. He now has a excellent radio show called The Perplexitarium, and it's on WFMU, and it features lots of music, lots of fun, and the, the inimitable humor of uh, John Dimes. <laughs> it's just, he's wonderful. Uh, the archived episodes can be found at WFMU.org. I will put a link to it in the show notes. Um, I also keep forgetting to mention this. The previously sold out official MPI Barnabas Collins Kane has been back in stock for a little while now, uh, a few months now, I think. Uh, get it while you can at darkshadowsdvd.com, which leads you right over to mpihomevideo.com. I noticed uh, MPI isn't restocking some of the other sold out items, like several of the bobbleheads or the lunchbox, uh, other things like that. So I'm not saying they won't restock those at some point. Uh, but it's been a while, so I don't know if they will. So uh, if you want that cane, the Barnabas Collins cane, uh, which has the Dark Shadows logo on it, um, it is cool uh, and it is available at uh, the MPI website. Okay, so um, last thing before we get on with the show, I always say this at the end of every show, but I'm going to say it at the beginning too because it's important. Please, if you do enjoy this podcast, please do rate, review, and subscribe, especially if you're listening on Apple Podcasts. That is important. Please do that. Uh, it does help the podcast to grow. It helps the podcast to reach more listeners. If you listen on YouTube, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. And also tell your friends if you belong to uh, Dark Shadows groups. Um, I try to share these podcasts to different Facebook groups, to Instagram, to Twitter, um, YouTube. I post it to the Classic Horror Film Board. I post it to the Dark Shadows forums. But there are places um, that I, I may not be active. Um, I have seen people posting on Reddit, which I appreciate because I'm not I'm not a member over there. And if you're a member of a, any kind of classic horror or um, classic television, cult television, anything like that uh, group or board and um, please feel free to share it. I would appreciate getting the word out to more fans, uh, getting the podcast to grow. Believe it or not, the podcast is one year old. Uh, I've been doing this for, actually it's over a year now as of this recording. So uh, yeah, Terror at Collinwood, uh, you know, we're celebrating our one year anniversary. So thank you so much to everyone who listens to this podcast, who subscribes to this podcast. Even if you don't subscribe, just listening to it, I appreciate everyone who, you know, is part of this. And that includes everybody who listens to the podcast, everybody who's reached out to me and said such nice things and shared their own memories and theories about Dark Shadows, plot lines and characters and things like that. So thank you uh, for being part of this podcast. My guests who've been on the podcast, who've come on here to talk with me and share their own passion and their own uh, creativity and their own involvement with Dark Shadows to talk to me about that. So I am sincerely grateful to them, to the guests, to the listeners, to everyone and to all of the creators behind Behind Dark Shadows, who helped to create Dark Shadows in the first place to give us this great show to celebrate, this great world uh, that we can explore and talk about 55 years later. Uh, isn't that amazing? Uh, at the end of the last episode of Dark Shadows, I was it, there was such finality to it, you know, when Thayer David uh, made it seem like for as long as they lived, uh, the Dark Shadows were but a memory of the distant past. But that's in parallel time, right? In 1840, that band of time, maybe, but not in the main time band. Are you kidding me? Unto this day, there is terror at Collinwood. Speaking of, let's get to today's episode. Welcome to Terror at Collinwood, the podcast dedicated to dark shadows. I am your hostess, Danielle, a.k.a. Penny Dreadful, and have I got an episode for you today. I am really thrilled to have my guest here today, Sabrina Herman 
from Hermes Press. Hermes Press has reissued deluxe collections of many of the 60s and 70s Dark Shadows publications, including the Gold Key comic book series and story digest, the Dark Shadows newspaper comic strips, and the Dan Marilyn Ross paperback library novels. I'm joined today by Sabrina Herman, who is an experienced managing editor and media and communication professional with a master's of literary and cultural studies focused in English language and literature slash letters from Carnegie Mellon University. She is currently working on editing and wrapping up the series of paperback library Dark Shadows reprints. Welcome to the show, Sabrina. Hi, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Gosh, (laughs) you know, Hermes Press has done such an incredible job of releasing these reprints of all of, I mean, I think everything that was published in the 60s and 70s for Dark Shadows. There's still a few that I, that come to mind that yeah. I, I'm going to mention, but um, but you have the gold key comics, the newspaper strips, the paperback library novels. That is just remarkable. And one year I was at uh, San Diego Comic-Con and I ran into Daniel. Uh, he had a table there for Hermes yeah. Press. And I think there was a panel there that year too with Catherine Lee Scott and Laura Parker, as, as I recall. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Laura Laura was, I think one of them was there and the other one we had to video in. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was the year they were both there. But yeah, Catherine Lee Scott is amazing and she would always come and sign at our booth for her own novels that she wrote in the Dark Shadows universe. Mm-hmm. Her own novels that are out of the Dark Shadows universe. We, are, we love her. We tell her anytime you're in San Diego. <laughs> and Laura Parker, same thing. She comes and signs her own books. She signs our books. She did, they did the wonderful panel with us. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just great. That's fantastic. Now, can you talk to me about what, what is your role uh, uh, in terms of with uh, working on these Dark Shadows books uh, that you guys are putting out? So the original, the Del, um, the, uh, the Gold Key series, mm-hmm. uh, my, my job was finding the material, getting the comics. That wasn't too hard because mm-hmm. I was a lot less involved back then because I was in college. Mm-hmm. This family business so you know go to college and then come work for the fam right for yeah the, um, notice the same last name i said oh that's, that's cool that's, that's herman the first i'm herman the second okay <laughs> and <laughs> and then for that that little story digest i did the image recoloring and the editing on the text for that it was pretty easy mm-hmm. um it was a lot of fun and then for the paperback library series um, so none of it was digitized. So we got the novels, um, including the very expensive, the vampire one, the last one. Oh, the vampire Barnabas uh, and the vampire beauty. Yeah. That, that was a wild read. Um, <laughs> so we got those and, um, Jim Pearson, who is one of the big guys in charge of the dark shadows license. He mm-hmm. gave us several copies for us to, um, basically, run through some software so we could get it digital and then um, software is smart but it's not super smart so my big job was to sit and read over the book several times to make sure you know rn doesn't become m you don't get weird colons semicolons odd font things happening and then i take the finished text and I put it into our um, design software, InDesign, and make sure it's all formatted and looks good and it's readable. And then Candace Hartner, who's um, one of our uh, other people at Hermes Press, she does the covers and the backs. Mm-hmm. And then Dan looks at it all and says, okay, this is good. And then it goes off to Canada to be printed. The, the- and I say, and I do a lot of the I'm in a lot of the Dark Shadows Facebook groups and uh-huh. on Reddit and all those. So I make sure to talk to the fans and make sure, like before we started the series, I did like a poll and I said, hey guys, I forget it was one of the Collins port pages. I said, hey guys, just want to check if there's odd misspellings. Like, do you want me to keep it like totally original? I was going to ask you, you yeah. To, <laughs> mm-hmm. Or do you want me to edit it? We did a similar thing when we did the Phantom um Uh there was a paperback series that came out it was like 15 of them I did the same thing with them I said hey guys do we keep it 100 percent or and the the consensus was if there's weird spelling errors please fix it Mm -hmm. um if there's like weird grammar keep it we want to see the original stuff Mm -hmm. and I think it wasn't nothing like this happened for dark shadows but for like the phantom he forgot to put a chap like it was called chapter 10 but it was chapter 9 and i decided to keep i think i decided to skip chapter 9 i like put a 
editor's note saying uh, it's not missing. He just didn't do it right, but we wanted to keep the authenticity. I think that's a good way to do it is to put the editor's note in there to just to note it, but not to change it. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. So the Dark Shadows fans, they voted for correcting spelling errors and the consensus yeah. was correct the spell. Interesting. It's it's That's an interesting contrast in terms of uh, when MPI Home Video was putting the episodes out on DVD, initially somebody at like the syndicator at World, I think it was at World Vision or it might have been at MPI, started editing out bloopers like, um, you know. No. Oh, somebody was doing it yeah and the fans got, got upset about that and there was there was blowback on that so they then they i guess they put them back yeah. in when they when they reissued those dvds so yeah um so but it's interesting with regard to the books that the, the, there's a consensus to fix spelling errors but leave grammatical weirdness in there <laughs> yeah some of the some of the phrasing is very strange mm -hmm. but um i love it and i mean Hermes Press is, a, but we're fans of things. Like we don't do it unless we love it. Uh -huh. And I've been like living in Dark Shadow since we got the license in 2011, I think. Yeah, you so, guys have had it for a while now. Yeah, it's been, you know, it's been, been I was going to say some. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a funny story. Um, so, we, you know, we're at San Diego Comic-Con and Dan's talking to Jim. Mm -hmm. And somehow it came up. He'd been trying to get the license to reprint it for years. And finally Jim said, okay, you know, here's how much money you can get the license. They did a handshake agreement. And wow. then later that afternoon, they had, they announced the Johnny Depp Dark Shadows. Oh. And we went, oh, well, they're not going to give us the license. They want to go to a big publishing house. But you know what? Those people are so honorable. They said, no, we knew this was, this announcement was coming. You have our handshake. We're good. That's Continue. awesome. You know, you, you've got the reprints. And then it's just been, they're just a fantastic group of people to work with, especially Jim. Well, Pearson. he's just wonderful. Yeah, Jim. Jim has been, you know, he is the he is the guy. He's the go to guy for for licensing with anything, licensing with Dark Shadows, and he dealing with the Dan Curtis Holdings, and that's that's all uh, Jim. And uh, it doesn't surprise me that he, you know, that he went with you guys even after that announcement because you you put out such quality publications for for those who may Thank not. You. Oh gosh, you know, for those who may not have any of these Hermes Press books, you've got to pick them up. I have the whole set of the Gold Key comics reprints the newspaper it's just they're really deluxe books mm -hmm. and the ross novels i love that they're they're a little bigger uh as i as i get older my my eyesight is not as <laughs> used to be so i have the original the, the little ones but these are the the font is a little bigger the the books themselves are are a little bit uh bigger yeah uh so i i was actually in florida uh, back in uh january and i brought barnabas quentin and the mummy's curse with me which is a fun one uh that's a fun one. Yeah, yeah. So, no, you mentioned you guys are, are fans of, of the stuff you put out. Are you a Dark Shadows fan or or is um, I am. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> I made I made my husband watch mm -hmm. um the the season well, once Barnabas got into the show because he's not I said, "Oh, you know, the first was not 115 episodes or something. There's no <laughs> Barney in it." But he was like, "I always keep seeing this guy with this cane." I said, "All right, all right. We'll start and I had the the big DVD set that came in the uh, the coffin, mm -hmm. and we popped that in, and he he couldn't get through a whole lot of it, but I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So um, I really love the comics, and I really the paperback novels are hysterical. <laughs> they're just they are so funny. I think I don't even know. I think my favorite one is oh god i'm so bad with titles the one with, with the with the aliens oh the body snap barnabas Quinn and the body snatchers thank yeah. you yeah that's <laughs> yeah i just i just i was editing it and sometimes i i edit it and i have to like do a chapter and then like go somewhere else and stare <laughs> because it's so it's incredulous but amazing but you have to like you have to get over each chapter yeah. Especially when you have to read it like five times. And a lot of those and books are very, you know, similar uh, in terms of how Ross wrote yeah, them. Yeah. The early ones um, mm -hmm. with Victoria are very different than the Anne Barnabas, Quentin, and. Anne. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that that one, the the Body Snatchers, that that's probably my favorite. That's a fun one. Um, there's one I was talking with uh, uh, someone I interviewed the other day, Andrew Higgins, and I said yeah. he was talking about the Ross novels. And I said, Barnabas Collins versus the Warlock, there should be a drinking game for every time yes. the name Asaph Clay is mentioned. 
It's like how oh many my God. times? Yes. How many times is ASAF Clay mentioned? I listened to the audio reading by Catherine Lee Scott. Did like a oh, an yes. audio, audio version of it. It really should be a drinking game for this. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yes. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of my. I got a lot of my friends into Dark Shadows too. Oh yeah. Oh and- awesome. Um, my one friend, every time um, they, the word dark shadows comes up, she's like, and scene. <laughs> yes. And she's done it. And she's done an entire series of parody covers where for some reason she put birds in instead of people. <laughs> like she, she took the heads of everybody and she made them into different kinds of birds. Oh my gosh. She makes bird, bird themed titles. It's oh, amazing. I would love to, does she, does she share those on social media? Oh find her i'll find one and i'll send it to you because oh, she lo- she has that. it all and her puns and they're <laughs> they're something else and she just and she makes them into little postcards and sends them to me so i have like a fridge full of oh that's, bird puns. that's awesome now is your is your dad uh, a fan as well yeah so he um he actually has at least one of the paintings that oh. was uh done for the covers of the Dell series or Dundell, i think sorry. it's the one Gold with Key. the golem was it both the golem one i'm pretty I sure i think he has he has that one yeah yeah and he had another uh he had another one that he sold a few years ago but yeah he collects the some of the original i think he has a ken ball daily too oh nice that's great maybe i've been trying to get one for my wall of art Mm-hmm. I haven't managed yet, but it's like on my list. Yeah, the 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 news well, the covers for the those newspapers. Gold key com- yeah, the newspapers. There's Ken Ball with like legendary uh, comic strip yes. artists. I was going to talk to you about the newspaper strips. Now, were you involved in the in the newspaper strip book as well? Uh, my big job was finding the material. I was a lot of it was all mm-hmm. it was all at Ohio State University. Okay, um, it was gifted. Most of it was at Ohio State. It was gifted by the Curtis family. Um, and we were graciously given access by the curator of the Billy Ireland museum Mm -hmm. to get the material because it was impossible to find a lot of it. Like the Sundays we had to Mm -hmm. put that book. It was sort of on the back burner for years because we just could not find some of the strips, Mm -hmm. but through their efforts and through, and through fans, like we reached out to people um, other, you know, fans in the community say, if you have any of this, please. And we do that with Johnny Hazard. We do that with the Phantom. Mm-hmm. We're very involved with the fan communities because we want to make sure that they like the product because they're the ones paying for it. Yeah. I mean, the Color Sundays, I remember there was, you were hunting for those. There was a oh. like Collinsport Historical Society would put out a, a call for if anybody mm-hmm. has these. And um, I, I've worked on, uh, I've worked on a comic strip book as well. I was a lead researcher on it for the Masters of the Universe comic strips, the He-Man comic okay, strip yeah. book for, for Dark Horse. Um, I spearheaded that project. And one of the big challenges there was it, with the He-Man comic, it was like for the first year or two, it was they ran it in the U.S., but then a lot of newspapers dropped it, but they continued to carry it overseas internationally. Mm-hmm. So it was a challenge trying to track down um, all of the strips. And then the Color Sundays, was it was practically impossible to get them all. We didn't end up finding them all. We went, we, I found the writer who wrote the strips, and he gave me scripts of, of the, so I was able to do synopses right. for yeah. the, that we were missing, I don't know, maybe 30 of them or something like that, but oh, out of like four and a half years of strips, but um, we're going through microfilm. We went to the Library of Congress. Yeah. I mean, it's, I can imagine with the Dark Shadows one too, it must've been quite a project trying to track those down. Oh yeah, it was, it was a big, basically if I have to travel somewhere to get it, I've, I've gone down to Georgia for strips for other series. Mm-hmm. You know, Michigan State is a great resource. There was one guy who had four complete years of missing Phantom strips in his basement. Wow, no kidding. And I was like, Wow. I said, I'm coming. I'm coming, <laughs> Jeff. And I flew out to Georgia and I got the strips and I put them in my suitcase and very carefully took them back. And, uh, you know, we're slowly sending them back to him. He's, you know, he gets a free book. Every time <laughs> one comes out, his name goes in it and he gets a book. That's great. Now, for these, some of these paper, I'm just going back real quick here to the Ross novels. Some of these um, that you're putting out have a, a different color cover and some of those are like exclusive ones that are signed by the actors correct yeah so we have the yellow that mustardy color for the regular edition and then um jim put us jim pearson put us in contact with uh victoria 
and oh, Alexandra Mulkey, yeah, mm -hmm. Alexandra Mulkey and uh, David Selby and yeah. then, um, upcoming Nancy Nancy Barrett. Yes, mm -hmm. to get their signs, and that's she, they're currently in the mail to her, so she can sign them and send them back to us. So that when the books come in, we can ship them out to everybody. Yeah, and I saw those are still available, correct? For pre order, yeah, there's a there's a couple left, yeah, and then we're maybe going to do something special at Comic Con. Oh, great! Oh, so you guys are going to be at Comic Con? Oh, wonderful! Yeah, that's fantastic. We're going to be at Comic Con, uh, same booth as always, eighteen twenty one and eighteen twenty three. Great. Yeah. And I, ho I hope uh, for, for anybody who is at San Diego Comic-Con that you will uh, go by. I haven't been in a while, in a few years. Comic-Con is uh, is awesome, but it's intense. It's, it's a quite <laughs> quite an experience. Oh, yeah. I've oh, been yeah. a few times, but it's been, been a little while since I've uh, since I've been. And especially with COVID and everything, I wasn't sure what mm -hmm. what the deal was going to be. But I'm glad uh, I'm glad things are starting to get back and, uh, and that you guys are, are going to be there. Um, so, uh, like I've mentioned, you've done most of the bit, all of the, all the you know, these major uh, Dark Shadows publications. There's still a few that come to mind, like like the Joke Book and the Cookbook and the Jonathan Frid yes. Picture Album, and some of these random ones uh, that, or, or the House of Dark Shadows novelization, which I, I think that was, I don't know if there was an issue with that or not. But uh, any thoughts or can, teasers on any of that stuff? So I'm pretty sure that. Um, I really want to do the cookbook because I think it's, it's hysterical. I'd love to get the cookbook because the original one is so expensive. Yeah. So I'm, we're kind of harassing Jim about it. We're saying, hey, 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 Jim, <laughs> hey, Jim, Jim, hey, hey. And I mean, he'll, he'll weaken. He'll weaken eventually. We're very obnoxious. <laughs> and don't, uh, don't let up. Don't let up. And I think House of Black Shadows is definitely something, you know, in the future that we oh, were. Oh, great, great. That's and then we want to do something. We're really no, we do a lot of like art of books, so that might also be something oh. in the future that we have to just follow Jim around about because we have a lot of original art mm -hmm. and we have a lot of access to stuff through the Dan Curtis production. So oh, you know, it would right. be out of the realm of possibility to do some sort of pretty art book in the future. Oh man, there's so much stuff too with merchandising with artwork like the model kit art artwork and mm -hmm. um just so, some of the the just you know things that came out for for dark shadows merchandising that would also be fun to include in something like that beyond oh, the yeah. publications you know like my uh my husband's aunt who's really wonderful she has i mean not she gave me a napkin that barnabas Collins signed for her when you he went to her school which is amazing it's pretty <laughs> funny so now i have everybody's autograph but she also had like a set of um, collector cards oh, that she gave me. Mm -hmm. so I have this like set of, I don't know, 50 or 60 really cool uh, mix of art and television, little playing cards, not playing cards, like collector cards that, yeah. you know, I'd love to include something like that. Oh, that would be memorabilia. fun. Memorabilia yeah. is so much fun. Totally. And like you mentioned, I mean, like the, like you said, your dad had the, had paintings of those gold yeah. key covers. Those gold key covers are so compelling like the first time i saw one of those i was in my uncle it was my uncle louis and up in his uh, my he, you know my grandmother's house all his old stuff was up in the attic and i went up there and i, I went up in the attic and i found uncle louis old comics and stuff and there was a gold key it was like issue nine creatures in torment with barnabas like leaping leaping down and i was like there's a dark shadows comic book no way you know so i was really excited by that it's just that just that cover alone with that memory always stuck in my head of those those that they're the dark shadows comics and then i'd find them at comic book stores and stuff the in the back issue bins and stuff and pick them up here and there and um but these collections are just so gorgeous and you have the introductions by jeff thompson uh, mm -hmm. where he, oh yeah jeff's great oh yeah he's he, i've had him on the show and I've, I've known of jeff for years he did a like a fan book that i had in the in the 80s i think or the 90s early 90s late 80s where he went over all of reviewed each of the dark shadows comic books and wrote in-depth you know uh essays about them and uh you know he used to write in to gold key when he was a kid and and <laughs> to to oh, offer yeah, Mm -hmm. He did some of the intros um, yeah. for the Dark Shadows, the Gold Key books. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's uh, he's fantastic. Uh, just so folks know, uh, Sabrina's uh, in the airport right now, so we, we may have some background noise. So I do. There's a, a there's a little cutie running. Yeah. She's a, <laughs> um, a little kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Awesome. Oh no 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 worries. Um. So what about 
original content, uh, Sabrina, in terms of one of the things I did for Dark Horse was it was an encyclopedia uh, book of uh, do you, mm-hmm. how, does Hermes do that kind of thing or is it or is it more um, you know reprints of vintage material or like you said art books and things like that or have you ever done any kind of original uh, content? So yeah, we've done we did an encyclopedia. It was like every Star Trek book. Uh-huh. Or every Star Trek comic, and then we did um, the James Bond. There, every James Bond comic uh-huh. that was pretty cool. Um, we don't really. We've done original materials. We have some graphic novels that we've published mm-hmm. that are geared towards like a younger audience. But our wheelhouse for Dark Shadows is reprinting the classic material. Gotcha. We um, we want to make sure, like with Catherine, Catherine Scott, and Laura Barker, that their stuff that they're working on that they're dark shadows material we don't want to overshadow them Mm -hmm. we don't want to take away from their success we just want to stay where we're comfortable and if someday someone comes to us with a project or jim comes to us with a project and say hey you want to do this and we'd be delighted but right now yeah we're comfortable with our reprinting gotcha gotcha yeah i mean there there have been the dark shadows publications over the years have been uh, quite varied we've had you know dark shadows collectibles books and mm-hmm. novels and, and things like that but I, I that's the one thing i was like god an encyclopedia i think would be fun but that would be intense because between if you did everything like between the tv show and the comics and the movies and, and then the newspaper strips and uh the, the audio plays and then the, the the remake shows if you work those into that uh you know the book the novels all of that just to, to contain yes. all of that would be immense it would so, be a gigantic or very, very thin papered book. You know? Yes. Yeah. There's a wiki page, you know, so I guess the, the, the yes. internet equivalent of that uh, exists. So uh, the Dark Shadows wiki. Um, so Sabrina, what future of Hermes Press with Dark Shadows? Uh, it, even though there are always storm clouds over Collinwood, it looks like the, the future is bright here with, <laughs> uh, with, with exciting things uh, to come. So where can fans find out more? Uh, how can they order stuff and how can they keep up? to date with what's going on with Hermes Press and the Dark Shadows books. Yeah, so we're really active on Facebook. Um, we have an Instagram. We have a Twitter. We had a Tumblr. Who knows what happened to that? <laughs> Go to our website, which is uh, HermesPress.com. We have a mailing list where I regularly send very um, funnily emailed uh, promos. And I got one today. Yes. yes. Revenge yes, the fifth. Revenge. <laughs> Revenge of the fifth. Yeah, I, I love Star Wars. <laughs> Oh yeah, and regularly gets on our YouTube channel and shows off when we get books. Mm-hmm. He does a promo where he reads through it and shows it off. If it's if it's art, if it's paper, he usually just shows the cover and ch- talks about it a little bit. So our YouTube channel, which is you know, YouTube slash Hermes Press, awesome. and uh, our Facebook is like Hermes Press Publishing because there's a lady who for some reason is named Hermes Press and won't give me that name. Oh gosh. What? Yeah, but I think wait, she, there's wait. I don't know. Are you serious? I don't well her you know how you can customize your URL for yeah. Facebook? Yeah. Hers and she I've never she never responds. Her her URL is slash Hermes Press. Weird. And it was around I know, and she's <laughs> not like that's not her name. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, we have our mailer, we have our Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, the website, mm-hmm. you know, gets updated really regularly. And you can yeah. always email us. I'm Sabrina at HermesPress.com. I check my email like a millennial does, which is to say always. <laughs> and if we don't get back to you, send us a Facebook message or send it to info at HermesPress.com. We're pretty active on all the social medias. So great. And I, I or will harass us on the Facebook pages. Tag great. me at Sabrina Herman. I'm on all the groups. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, I'm gonna. I'm, I'll definitely post the uh, links as well in in the show notes. I'm sure a lot of people listening to this already are uh, quite familiar with Hermes Press. But in just in case, on the off chance that you are not, yeah. uh, please uh, do follow those links so that you can find out about all of the great Hermes Press publications and all of the amazing things that Sabrina is uh, working on. Uh, I ca- I cannot wait to uh, to see what the future holds for the Dark Shadows publications at Hermes Press and all of the great publications beyond Dark Shadows, like you said, the Phantom and other characters that you have, uh, comic strip characters that you have uh, honored in, with your publication. So that's really awesome and really exciting. So thank you so much for joining me today, Sabrina. I sincerely appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It was a really good chat. 
All right. Thank you very much for listening to this episode. Thank you also to Sabrina Herman for taking the time to sit down with me at the airport. She was on the run. She was uh, about to uh, catch a flight, but she took the time to sit down and talk with me about these incredible Hermes Press publications. If you don't have one of these in your collection, you should have them all. They're they're just amazing. Uh, so head on over to HermesPress.com. Also, please be sure to subscribe to the podcast through your favorite podcast app, whether it be Apple Podcasts or Audible or Stitcher or whatever it is that you listen to your podcast on, please be sure to subscribe and be sure to rate and review. If you have the time, I would appreciate that. And again, uh, if you don't subscribe to the YouTube channel, in addition to listening to the audio version, go for it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you would. If you do that, please be sure to like the video. Feel free to leave a comment too. I got to get around to doing one of my uh, email listener feedback episodes down the road here. So uh, we will be doing that. And thank you for listening. And for as long as they lived, the dark shadows never truly vanished, for there will always be Terror at Collinwood. Terror at Collinwood is a Penny Dreadful production.